This week we're moving forward in time and a bit farther north with Heinrich Ibsen's A Doll's House. Ibsen was born in 1828 in Norway. He is not noted for being particularly innovative in his technique, but he does offer a distinctly progressive ideology that challenges the traditional rules and beliefs of society. Unlike Shakespeare and Sophocles, who were interested in the great people and the major moments of the worlds they created, Ibsen's writing focused on normal people in average situations. The drama doesn't come from political intrigue or murder, it comes from everyday demands of life. Ibsen believed that the individual's right and need to make their own choices outweighed the demands of social conformity. His characters challenge us to reconsider the ways that our world works. Unsurprisingly, perhaps, his plays were met with controversy. Many decried his challenging of traditional gender roles and particularly his presentation of complex, imperfect women who weren't content with their lives as wives and mothers. Though the setting and scope of the plays are distinctly different, Ibsen nonetheless shows the same fascination as Sophocles and Shakespeare with the way that the personal and the political intersect. Our first two playwrights used familial turmoil and personal loss to explore the important questions of leadership, war, and religion. Ibsen flips this paradigm and instead explores the impact of society's rules and expectations on individuals. In this play, we meet Nora and her husband Torvald, who seem like the perfect couple on the surface. Notice the way that Ibsen describes the scene, a cozy sitting room decorated in china figures and leather-bound books. It's the perfect representation of middle-class respectability. But soon, we see that their relationship is not as perfect as it seems, especially for Nora. Pay attention to the way that Torvald speaks to Nora, constantly referring to her as little or delicate, calling her a bird or a squirrel. Consider what that says about their relationship. We also meet a poor widow, very much a foil to Nora, and a blackmailer, both of whom directly challenge the idealized version of the life that Nora is desperate to cling to. Ibsen demands that the reader question who is a hero and who is a villain. He wants us to see that the traditions and morals, moral expectations of society can be cages for those who long for something different than the role that society has set out for them. As you read this play, consider your reactions to these characters. What are we supposed to think of them? Is Torvald a villain or a victim? Is Nora courageous or callous? Is Krogstad dastardly or merely desperate? None of the characters are easily dismissed or understood, and readers often have strong reactions to their choices. You'll have a chance to explore one of these in your discussion board post this week. Remember, too, that your third and final writing project is posted. You must complete whichever option you have not done thus far. As always, feel free to reach out with any questions. We've almost made it to the end, so hang in there and happy reading.